Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode will be one of the most anticipated. Finally, we will discuss the PvP issues for low resonance and try to understand them properly to find an effective solution. So remember to subscribe the channel and let's get started. Since PvP requires a lot more than just pointing out what essences to use, I would like to discuss everything from the very beginning. This will apply to every class and every build. No one is talking about it, and I believe it will cause more people to show up at battlegrounds. First of all, it is necessary to say about mindset. To get far in PvP, you need to understand that it is necessary to have a proper understanding of your character's mechanics, so it doesn't really matter if you have high or low resonance. If you want to win, you have to try to give more to your team in every game and your counterpart on the opposite team. What is hopefully obvious is that when playing a necromancer, for example, you don't really have much choice you have to go in the direction of crowd control. And here comes the first problem that someone calls you a support. If such a position is unacceptable to you, then maybe you just picked the wrong character. But a reasonable player knows that no matter what role he plays, the most important thing is to win. And in any game of this type, crowd control is one of the most powerful mechanics. So it's obvious that by playing with a build based on the best skills of a particular class, you greatly increase the chances of winning. So the right mindset and build is the first thing in PvP. Your team will be grateful for your good work, or at least it should be. Speaking of the team, this is where another thing is quite important, the perception of the map. In theory, it is very simple. In practice, many people completely ignore this aspect of PvP. Reading the map properly gives you a huge advantage. You can easily see where and how many opponents there are, but more importantly, where your team is. This way, you can decide where your character will be most needed and whether you will have allies to help. But before anything else, Always control the state of the objectives. Do not unnecessarily run after frags. If in some place the opposing team is pushing objectives and you don't do anything with it, then this is very first step to lose match. However, remember not to attack mindlessly. Always better to make sure you have the support of the team at your back. Unfortunately, there are still a lot of people who don't understand where they should be at the moment, which often forces you to play by yourself, so it would be good if the possibility of pinging was introduced. Especially playing in attack, communication fails. So these are the two basic rules for PvP gameplay. Understanding them will allow you to win more games. Keep in mind that the point is to win. No one cares about your score in the table. Perhaps if they removed the scoreboard, people would play better. But the tradition of this channel is not to talk about the obvious things. So let's move on to things that are known to fewer players. And back to the video about what whales don't talk about. Specifically to how important second statistics are. A miracle happened after uploading this video and suddenly everyone started talking how important it is. It's just a shame that no one explained why and how to use it because this is even more important. And just to make you understand how important flat values are, contrary to common knowledge that only gems have reduced properties then you must know 
that all percentages are reduced on PvP, not only from gems. So the distribution of your stats is key, especially if you are a player who doesn't have much, and unfortunately, a lot of people transfer their gear from PV, hoping to be able to kill players just like mobs. Not effectively, of course, and on top of that, they often die from the first hit. Interesting that it doesn't give them any thought as to why this happens, and unlike PV, on battlegrounds, the most important thing is endurance. Regardless of what class you play, you should always make your survival as long as possible first. I guarantee you that the time you gain by investing in survival will ultimately provide you with increased total damage and effectiveness of your CC. Unfortunately for normal players, this means investing in something at the expense of another statistic, but I believe it is very profitable. And here it must be said that the distribution of statistics depends largely on what opponents you usually play with. So I'll discuss it in such a way that you can adjust it to your needs. But I point out that you should always base your build on countering much stronger players. Because they are your biggest challenge on battlegrounds. If you are able to do this, then you will also be able to deal with players with a similar level of equipment without any problems. Many people think that PvE is no longer a challenge, and so they should understand that it's time to stop mindlessly investing in damage and armor penetration, of course. If they want to play battlegrounds this way, you'll be able to be just as effective on PvP as you are on PvE. So let's move on to secondary statistics to get them right, and open your mind because many things have been misjudged by authorities for a long time, and someone finally has to say it. So, to begin with, Let's take a look at what the expected level on the battleground is. As you can see, the expected level equals 1. This means that not a certain required number to get benefit from all bonuses. But does that mean you will be as effective as described? The answer is no. To explain this, let's look at potency and resistance description. At this point, there is no doubt that the effectiveness of these statistics comes from the difference in the value of your potency and your opponent's resistance. Remember that you need a lot of potency points for the statistic to give you any bonus. The best you can do is to check what is the average resistance of your opponents. However, most likely you will not be able to achieve such a level, especially with the decent level of your resistance at the same time, which in my opinion is much more important, believe me or not, but you definitely want to last longer than your CC. So no matter what character you play, in my opinion, always resistance should be your priority. It will allow you to not stand in someone's CC for ages. It's better to use a barren set to increase the length of loss of control effects. It is also very important that potency increases the length of harmful effects. These are all debuffs and CC. Very often repeated myth that it increases the duration of DOT, which is not true, and there is no evidence for this. DOTs have their own duration, and it is not increased by the value of your potency, so don't invest in this statistic if you want to get more damage. It doesn't work that way. Another statistic is armor and armor penetration. Some believe that these are completely independent statistics and should not be compared. 
So let's take a closer look. As you can read, penetration reduces armor and armor reduces damage. So these first effect of these the statistics interact directly with each other. I don't understand for what reason people don't see the connection here. So, as before, make sure what is the average value of armor used by the players you are playing against in Battleground. Here you may not be able to collect enough penetration, and your penetration will be unnoticeable in practice. Therefore, I personally think that at this stage of the game you need about 1500 armor and a similar amount of resistance to start thinking about armor penetration and potency. Remember that it is always better to tickle your opponents for a long time than to die from the first blow. The paradox of armor is that having a higher survival rate will result in you dealing more damage over time. But there's something to be said about the other property of these stats. Extra damage from the critic and extra reduction from the block. If you analyze these bonuses, you will understand that block is exactly the opposite of critical hit. This is something that people often do not pay attention to. Block halves damage and critical hit doubles and so the increased chance of block greatly increases your survival rate, especially when you invest in armor, then damage from block is reduced by more than half. However, remember that critical hits cannot be blocked, so it is most effective against characters with a low critical hit chance. Either way, you should find a place for a block chance for your character, if you think you don't have enough of it, then I recommend choosing a bonus from a warband. We are talking about the protector. Will increase the chance of block, reduce damage, and increase the amount of your HP. Of course, you must have these bonuses in your warband, but it is an ideal combination for low resonance. Although the amount of damage and HP is large from the Paragon points. I think that in addition to Gladiator and Treasure Hunter, you should fill in your stats deficiencies here. So even if you want to keep the value of damage high, don't take the shortest path anymore. Just choose stats that will be useful for your character on PvP. In the case of really large deficits, I recommend giving up some of the points of damage. To be honest, I'm thinking about doing it this way myself and increasing the amount of my armor. Although it would be best if the value of armor sufficient with gems and sanctuary. So now after the update, everyone has a much better chance to increase the level of their regular gems. Remember to collect them every day to not fall behind. In my opinion, you should have at least one gem of each color at rank 7. If you play regularly, this should soon not be a big problem. The rest of the slots you should use to get the values that in your opinion will be most suitable for your character. I can't promise you that you will destroy everyone on battleground with it. But these are things that are very underestimated, and paying a little more attention to them will allow you to get much better results, and it will certainly allow you to have more fun with the game. Forgive me for not adding a build for the Necromancer in this video, but first I want to point out the most important PvP mechanics that are not well known, and I think they are just as important as the essences used or even more. The comments section is out of control, so feel free to express your opinion. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated. I encourage you to check out the other videos, and as always, Thanks for watching.